We have been uh, looking at a series now about getting, why we're stuck, why things aren't developing like they need to, why we're not more like Jesus today. And uh, we've looked at the commitment we make to Christ, whether that's deep or not. We've, last week talked about sin. Do you take sin seriously? And most people do not. They pretty much think, they rename it, they pretty much think, well, it's not all that big a deal to God, and I'm getting by just fine with my sin. And a casual approach to sin will always get you stuck. And uh, if you're not growing in your spiritual life, that's a place you need to look. Today, I want us to discuss this issue of unforgiveness in Colossians 3, 12 through 13. And uh, you can see it up here. And uh, I'm going to read those verses here. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Let's uh, bow our heads and let's pray this morning. Father, there is such a deep need for forgiveness in our country today. We have become a nation of victims everywhere. A nation of people being offended by what someone else might say, by what someone else might have done or did do or did say. Offense seems to be honorable today. And yet in your word, Lord, you've commended us not to take offense. You chose not to be offended. Stephen chose not to be offended. Paul chose not to be offended. Now, Lord, help us so that we're not stuck, so we can be everything you've planned, everything you've desired for us. Now, Lord, speak through me this morning. This is a long message, and yet, Lord, you can work quickly in our hearts. So, Lord, speak quickly in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I wasn't trying to warn you that this is going to be a long message, but it's not going to be that long. It's not going to be afternoon before you get gone. But it is an important message about being offense. You know, people take offense all the time. You ever notice that? They just take offense. I don't like what she said. I don't like what he did. I just, that's just not right. I don't, I don't deserve to be treated this way. Those are all terms we say. All of us. And you have a choice in life. Life just always comes down to a choice. I often say to you, and say, have said over and over, you have a choice to be offended. You have a choice to be hurt. No one can hurt you. We used to say when I was a kid, sticks and stones will hurt my bones or break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Today, it's words hurt. People hurt. We need to get back to where sticks and stones will hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me. And there's a reason for that. We are captured by other people. Captured by them. Listen to what Albert Einstein said. He said, arrows of hate have been shot at me too, but they never hit me because somehow they belong to another world with which I have no connection whatsoever. And think about that. No connection. Why doesn't the word, uh, the hatred towards him, why doesn't it hit him? Because he chooses not to let them. He chooses it. He chooses to say, I'm just not going to do that. I mean, it's not, I'm in another world. For a Christian, we would say, being hurt is a choice to live in this world. And according to its values, according to its systems, according to its reactions, this is how we live today. People get offended. I read one guy's article last night about this issue. I'm not a Christian. Talking about forgiveness. Talking about, well, he wasn't talking about forgiveness. He was talking about taking hurt. And he said it's interesting how words can hurt us. And we talk in the area of pain that it's kind of like when you get hit, you drop a sledgehammer on your toe. Would that hurt? Thank you. <laughs> it would. And they say, well, I didn't, I, I didn't have steel toes on, maybe. Yeah, okay. It hurts. And when we get hurt by someone else, it's just like that kind of pain. No, it's not. And I'll tell you why it's not. It doesn't matter what person you're here. If you get a sledgehammer dropped on your toe, if you have any feeling left in it, 
you're going to feel pain. And if you have no feeling in your foot, maybe you, you're diabetic and there's nothing going down down there anymore, you don't feel anything, it'll still smash your toe. It'll break your toe. Pain, like physical pain, crosses all barriers, hurts everyone. Severe pain. But when it comes to the idea of someone saying th something to us, why can I say something to you and it doesn't offend you, but someone else says the very same thing and it offends you? Why is that? It's not like physical pain. Physical pain causes all of us pain. But unforgiveness and hurt are a choice we make. We choose that. No one can hurt you. No one. Look at this verse. Paul is saying... If you're going to live in fellowship with others, if you're going to be healthy as a Christian, if you're going to be everything God wants, you must choose to forgive. You have to. You have to. Well, that assumes, by the way, when he says that, that assumes that people are going to hurt. People are going to do hurtful things, right? If he says you must forgive someone, that means you're going to do something to us. Right? So you come into church, thank you, you come into church and say, I can't believe that you would do this. You're a church member. Well, Paul wouldn't have said that. Paul would say, you may as well expect it because people are sinners. And sometimes they're going to talk wrong. Sometimes their personality is someone you don't like. You have some, baby, you have some personality you don't like. Usually they're the ones that aren't like you. you know? Somebody's personality grates on you. Maybe they're a phlegmatic and they just never got off the couch. That just bugs you. you we got to clean the house. You want to clean? I don't want TV. Some people are really pushy, demanding, and that just bug you. Really. Maybe you ought to exert grace towards them, which is what Paul is saying. People are different. Listen, if you got offended by every time your wife or your husband didn't say an act right, how often would you be offended? <laughs> now, dude, this is the time not to say anything. <laughs> how often would you be offended if you took every opportunity that when they do something that might be hurtful, it, you'd be upset all the time. All the time. And some people choose to be upset all the time. We call them victims. They just see it everywhere. You do not want to become a victim because victims, you can't, you can't talk to a victim because at some point you're going to offend them. You ever had people like that? People you're around going, oh my goodness, got to walk, got to walk like you're on eggs here because you got to be careful. Might say something a little offensive. Might say something not quite right. Oh dear. Jesus offended people all the time. Jesus said things that were very offensive. Let's see. Said, what did he say to the Pharisees? You brood of vipers. A bunch of snakes in the grass. Whitewashed sepulchers. You look good on the outside, but nothing going on in the inside. My goodness. He even said, you're not from your father Abraham. You're from the father of the devil. Jesus didn't fall back, did he? You and I sometimes get offended by God. There are times when God comes to us and he says, you're a sinner, it's about time you stop that. Last Sunday, talked about being a sinner and how we have to repent, how you have to get right with him. Some of you won't read your Bible, some of you won't pray, because every time you do it, God points his finger and says, this is wrong in your heart. And so you just get offended. And you say, I just won't talk to God. I just won't go to church. I just won't pray. God's a pain in my life. And you back up. And you wonder why you're stuck. Because God offends you. God offends you. Pastors offend you. They preach direct. Someone told me this last week or two that I spoke very directly. I wasn't sure what that meant. I guess that means I'm supposed to turn around and talk over here when you're you know, very directly. My brother told me one time, he said, I like what you've written, but you're very direct. And I thought, I wonder what that means, because I don't know any way else to be than direct. Some people are offended by that. Don't want you to be direct. Because when you're direct, it opens up things. It 
turns a light on in the room and all of a sudden I can't stand it that you're direct so I'm just gonna get offended some people use offense as a method to control their world okay they control their world one guy said in the claiming the status of victim and assigning all the blame to others a person can achieve moral superiority while simultaneously disavowing any responsibility of his or her behavior the victim status is a powerful one the victim is always morally right neither responsible nor accountable and forever entitled to sympathy forever entitled to it and I'm here to challenge you that this morning if you are thinking you're a victim or if you feel like everybody's out to get you and if you feel like the world is always opposed to you and it'll never work for you others can you can't and everyone speaks somebody looks sideways at me I saw it I knew it if you're a victim guaranteed you are stuck spiritually because you've chosen to make you the center of everything Mary John and I were talking about this on the way to church this morning and she said my mother told me something when I was a little girl I think in middle school and she said she was sharing with her how somebody had talked about her and she was offended and her mother said oh honey don't assume people are actually thinking about you that much I had a guy one time came to me and he said, uh, Pastor, you were preaching that sermon to me. That was right at me. What do I say? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Actually, what I wanted to say was, you think too highly of yourself. I hadn't even thought about you. The truth is, most things that happen to us aren't really someone trying to offend us. Most of the time, it's how we receive it. It's our responsibility. And some people use it, use offense to control. If you get offended, what, what does the other person usually do when you, oh, well, that offended me. What does the other person usually do? Back off. Lay it on. Lay, <laughs> yeah, Richard and I lay it on. Yeah, let's just go after this, you know. But most people kind of back up, and they don't want to see that. They want to see the anger. They want to see the, re the retaliation. They don't want to see what's going on. And instead of trusting God, they... <laughs> get offended and offense becomes a way of manipulating other people it's, it becomes a way of controlling everything now listen if God's not controlling everything or God's not in charge you are then when you're when you take offense when you take offense you become the center of everything it's always about you it's interesting how when you talk to someone who takes offense, how everything is filtered through their life and them. Everything's about them. Everything's about, why did you do that? Why did you say that? You must have meant me. It must be me. I can't handle that. Most people who are take offense are weak inside and do that as a form of control. Now here's what God wants. God wants you to be free. He wants you to say, when offense comes, I'm going to forgive. You say, well, that person doesn't deserve to be forgiven. Really? As if you are? As if I am? Do I deserve to be forgiven? How did Jesus forgive you? When he forgave, what did he say? He forgave you immediately, without hesitation. He just forgave. He does it willingly. He doesn't make you change. Now, you do change. After you give your life to Christ, you say, God, you're the ruler of my heart. You changed my life. God changes you inside, and you become different. Hopefully better. When we go and forgive someone, we do it like Jesus forgave us. Willingly. With love in our hearts. When someone mistreats us, when someone speaks harshly of us when we don't like the way someone is let me tell you what you can do when you don't particularly like a personality type you need to ask God to bring them close to you so you can love them because the opposite is what the world does isn't it interesting how in, in the second world war uh, there was ba there were battles in the Far East and uh, obviously against Japan and uh, there was a group being rocketed by the Japanese and they couldn't figure out where the rockets were coming from. 
and they got they captured a, a young Japanese soldier and they asked that soldier where are the rockets and he wouldn't tell them and finally he did say this the Japanese will do exactly the opposite of what you think and the more they thought about that the more they considered that the more they considered where those rockets were coming from the obvious place would be this side of the mountain and the Japanese flipped it and put it on the other side of the mountain and when they figured that out they knocked out the rockets you need to look at this world and say how does the world handle offense they demand their rights they expect to be treated better they hold it against people they turn their back on them reject them. one lady said I don't have a problem with unforgiveness this is in a, in a class on New Testament becoming like Jesus class I taught in the college and he said uh, she said I don't have any problem with unforgiveness when someone mistreats me I just cross them off my list okay that's a definition of unforgiveness cross them off the list have nothing to do with them why because that's what the world does if you have a situation where you have people who you don't like people who aren't like you think they ought to be or who aren't acting like you want them to act or personalities kind of great on you you need to say oh God bring them closer to me so I can learn to love them the way they are no what we do is we expect them to change and that's not the biblical answer the biblical answer is love your enemies love those who mistreat you be kind to those who aren't the way you want them to be that's the way we're supposed to be so in church you got someone you just grates on you and your personality you need to spend time with them until you love them the way they are when I, when Mary Jo and I were in music group in college we had a young we, we were told in one tri one trip we were on uh, we were going to schools and performing in schools and then having youth rallies at night and having people saved. We had a great time. The leader said, I want you to pick one guy in your group that you can pray for. And I said, it's the guy sitting beside me. That dude needs prayer. He bugged a tar out of me. He just bugged me. We're playing trombone together. I'm thinking, he's just crazy. What's the matter with him? So I thought, he needs prayer. Two days into the week. And he's my friend. I don't know what happened to him. Nothing. He didn't change at all. I did. I changed. God changed my heart. I prayed for him every day, every afternoon, every morning, before each performance we had, before each school we went to. I prayed for him. Oh, God, bless him. Give him a great day, Lord. I pray he doesn't miss any notes. Lord, I pray he does a good job. Lord, bless him. He needs help. Third day, got up and thought, I kind of like him. He hadn't changed a bit. And from that day on, never had another problem with him. And I'll tell you people, you have a problem with somebody, you are the problem. Those are choices we make. Those are choices we make. We don't forgive them because they don't deserve it. We don't forgive them because they need to be punished. Isn't that something? Here's what people do when they're offended by somebody. They ignore them, right? Yeah, it's not going to be in my life. going to write them off, cross them off. Sometimes what we do when we don't have forgiveness for someone, we don't like what they've done or they've hurt us, we don't spend time with them, and we talk about them. We tell other people about them. We gain support. That's what the world does, don't they? He said this word. Somehow, if he says this word, I'm offended. And then everybody else ought to be, aren't you offended too? And we're all mad at this guy for saying that word whatever word that might be. Offense we pass around and then we punish people. And yet the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. It's not your job to punish. That's God's job. By the way, when you forgive someone, you're not saying they're okay. You're not saying what they did is okay. God will take care of them, right? God will discipline sin. Now, he might be long-suffering. He might not do it in your time. He might not do what you wished. You know, kind of like when you say, Lord, kill him. Or, Lord, get rid of him. Lord, discipline her. Lord, make her life miserable. Except Jesus said, pray that God would bless them. That ought to be the way you're praying. And God will take care of sin. He always does. And he does the right thing in someone's heart. You know, what's interesting about sin, no matter it's our sin or their sin, that God disciplines sin. Some people are stuck in their walk with Jesus, 
can't hear from God, can't, can't uh, follow his will because they're not sure what he's saying, and they can't do anything like that because they're harboring sin, and the sin is unforgiveness. So sin hurts you. Unforgiveness hurts you. I said earlier that the victim it, it makes a choice that the other person is doing this to them. Let me tell you what that does. It moves you into the center of the universe instead of God, and it means that you are not ruled by Jesus. If I can get you angry, I'm in charge of you. If I can get you upset, I rule you. If I can make you hurt today, I'm in charge. You understand? When you choose to be the victim, and you choose to be unforgiving, that person rules your life. I had a guy one time, oh boy, I was going to say he was old, but he was 63, and I'm 64. <laughs> young guy father had already died came forward in service one Sunday night he said pastor my father has hurt me and I said we need to forgive let's just sit let's just kneel down here and let's forgive he said he's dead I said well he's very alive in you and his memory is very alive you need to forgive him so he blubbered through a prayer and he cried. And he got up free. First time since he was a boy, he was forgiven. He had forgiven his dad. And he was free. Man, he heard his dad yelling at him, heard his dad calling him all kinds of things before that. But God had healed his heart. His dad was his God. Because his dad ruled his emotions. His dad ruled his actions. The person who sins against us when we are unforgiving rules our lives, controls us. It is why an abused person becomes an abuser unless they're healed. Because abuse will be abused, when you're abused, you will respond by abusing others unless you're free. Because that person who hurts you still rules your life. That's why you forgive. And sometimes we don't forgive because it makes us vulnerable. See, when you forgive people, you're able to be hurt again. And some of you are just saying, I'm tired of being hurt. And you build a bubble around yourself. You build this little cocoon that you get in and you huddle down in there and you nestle yourself into it and you have protected yourself. Unforgiveness is a way of protecting yourself. When you are protected, you cannot be loved. And you cannot love. God's called you to love. God's called you to care for other people. But you can't. You are stuck in your protective bubble. And you'll never, ever be able to obey God. You'll always be stuck. In order to be alive, in order to be free, you have to be vulnerable. In order to fly and soar like an eagle, you're going to have to forgive people so you can soar. Or you can capture yourself, be huddled in, protecting yourself, and forever, never sense love, even from God. And some people in their unforgiveness have found that they wonder if even God loves them. It's not for lack of love from God. It's for the bubble that protects but you've chosen to take offense. And some people say, who hurts you the most? Who hurts you the most? Well, it's certainly not the UPS guy that comes and puts a package and rings the doorbell and never waits for me to say thank you. I try to race from my office to the front door so I can get whatever he's left there quick enough to say thank you. He rings the doorbell. I, doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm reading. I'm studying. I'm getting out there. I get to the door. I open the door. I fling open the outside door and I go, thank you! And he's in the truck by then already. And he's going, you know, kind of waving and saying goodbye. It's kind of fun game I play. You know, he could, it doesn't matter what he does in response. I'm not getting offended because I don't care what he thinks, right? I don't even know who he is. Don't even know his name. I've only been able to wave to him. He doesn't hurt me. He doesn't hurt you. People that distant, those service kind of people, they don't really bother us. Now, if you're bothered by them, 
you're in a heap of trouble. Because the people who aren't close to us hurt us. People who are close to us hurt us even more. Because it's the ones who are closest to us that hurt us. It's family members. It's husbands. It's wives. It's kids. It's parents. Ugh. It's church members. It's the neighbor you're close to. It's the person you're close to who hurts you the most. That's why when a pastor fails, so many of the church leave. And they fail too. Why? Because they're close. They expect great things. They expect so much from them. I expected that if you said you loved me, you would never do this. Wait a minute, people. It is those who are close to us who hurt us the very most. Why? Because the, the greater the level of love, the greater the level of hurt. So when you're loved and you are being loved, those are the ones who hurt us. So whom should you, who should you forgive first? Well, that idiot husband, and that foolish wife, and that silly kid, and those thoughtless parents, and those crazy church people, and those people you confided in who told. It is those who are close to us. David said exactly that in Psalm 55, verse 12. He says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have had my, hid myself from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. Even David knew the closer someone is, the more hurt they can bring. All the more reason to forgive those who are close. See, we live with this fallacy that the closer they are, the less they're able to hurt. That is just not right. We have this lie, we believe. If you love me, you'd never do anything wrong. Really? Is that true about you? Are you that good? Can your husband and your wife say, oh, he's never hurt me. And only one person can say that. No, I'm not going to say Mary Jo. That's nobody. Nobody can say that. We all hurt each other. I tell people, before they get married, you better learn how to forgive and repent. <coughs> repent of your sin and forgive the other person's sin, or you'll just be fighting and finished. It's a time to repent. God, I'm sorry. Wife, Mary Jo, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? And it's time for you to say, yes, I forgive. And would you forgive me? If you would live your life every day, I said last week, getting on your pillow and saying, oh God, what did I do wrong today? God, forgive me for this day. Forgive me for what I've done. God, would you set me free from this? And God will say, amen, brother, you're forgiven. Now, would you turn around and forgive those who sinned against you? Would you add to that sin this week? Lord, who sinned against me today? Who am I holding judgment against today? Who have I just assumed, ah, they meant that about me? Who have I held anything against? And if you'd lay your head on that pillow and say, oh God, forgive me, and God, who do I need to forgive? You will grow spiritually. But most people won't do it. They think they have a right to, unforg to unforg for unforgiveness. They have a right. As if that the example of Jesus isn't enough. That he certainly had the right to not go to the cross, didn't he? <clears throat> he certainly had the right not to be killed. He certainly had the right to stand up and say, don't hit me. I've not done anything wrong. He certainly had that right, but he did not take that right. Have this mind which was in Christ Jesus, who decided not to take offense. <coughs> Humbled himself and gave himself up for us. Have that mind in you is what Philippians says. Have that mind in you. Instead of taking offense, instead of being hurt, say, I'm going to forgive. The quicker you forgive, the better you are. The quicker you forgive, the less you're, of God, you're God and you let God be God. The quicker you forgive, the healthier you're going to be. The quicker you forgive, the more you're like Jesus. So what does this verse say? Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Quickly. Do it. Do it. There's a little phrase in here I wanted you to see. 
right in the middle under those big words compassion kindness humility and then the next one bear with each other that's not a term we generally hear bear with each other it means put up with each other not with a scowl either some of you are lazy some of you we can't get you to sit down some of you are a little lazy at times and busy at other times some of you some of you talk too much some of you don't talk enough we're just all different when you bear with someone you just let them be who they are now if you're sinning then you need to be confronted with sin, right? If I sin, you need to come to me and say, Pastor, that was sinful. You're right, sorry. Otherwise, we bear with them. Hey, you put your arm around them. Isn't that great? <laughs> You're wonderful. I love it when you just clean everything up while we're sitting here doing nothing. Or, I guess you could put your arm around someone and say, I love it. everybody's working but you. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you know what? You just need to let people pee who God's made them. And accept them like they are. Part of the reason we reject some, some people is we just don't accept them the way they are. This is the way God's made them. So I said, I prayed for that guy. He didn't change, I did. You have a problem with someone, pray for him. Let God change you. Say, Lord, what does God say about forgiveness in Matthew 6 he says forgive have you ever, ever quoted the Lord's prayer you know right in the middle of the prayer it says Lord forgive my trespasses sins or debts or whatever version you use as I have forgiven those who trespass against me so let's evaluate what that phrase says Lord forgive me in the same way that I forgive others Oh yeah, I don't. I get offended. I get insulted. I get angry. I hold it against them. I talk about them. I just ignore them. I mistreat them. I don't care about them. And I'm certainly not going to spend time around them. So Lord, that's how I deal with people who hurt me. So you go ahead and treat me that way. You really don't want to pray the Lord's Prayer, do you? Because that's what it says. Lord, in the way I have forgiven, forgive me. You have been commanded to forgive in the way he has forgiven you. God has forgiven you everything. Quickly. And that's the way we are to forgive. I think he demands it. Your relationships will be determined by your ability to forgive. If you can't forgive, you will hurt every relationship you have. Every one. You will learn the habit of how to control. You will learn the habit of how to get your way but you will not learn to get along with someone you will not learn to love you will learn to demand and demand always steals love God demands us to forgive our relationships are determined by it and our well-being depends on it Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 says not to let any root of bitterness grow up in us, spring up in us. For by it we are defiled. We are troubled, I mean, and others are defiled. We are troubled. Unforgiveness troubles us. It troubles us. Unforgiveness troubles me. It's really interesting. Someone will do something. We get offended. They go off and they're happy. Nothing's wrong in their life. They just seem fine. They're just fine. And we're feeling like we're on the ground and bleeding and feel horrible and in order to protect ourselves we just get angry you get people outside we we get offended by them and then we're miserable and we have created this offense that now rules our hearts instead of Jesus and they're fine and I, I guarantee you 90% of the time the offenses that come were not intended now, there are some that do there are people that have hurt you, and they've meant to. Parents, husbands, wives, some of them have meant to hurt. But the verse doesn't say, if they meant it, don't forgive them. If they meant it, forgive them. 
If they didn't mean it, forgive them. If offense comes, you omit you. Otherwise, you are troubled. And people around us are defiled by our unforgiveness. You have a little saying. You know, this is a message I know a lot of you have already heard most of this. But I've decided there are things we need to hear again. Hurting people hurt people. Let me say it again. Hurting people hurt people. I'll guarantee you there are times when I've sat there and prayed with someone and said, you need to forgive that person. After they've truly forgiven that person, I'll say, now what do you think of that person? They'll say, oh my goodness. I now see the hurt in their heart. I never saw that before. All I ever saw was my hurt. But when you forgive, you begin to see that hurting people hurt. If you're hurt by someone, they're hurting. See, when you're healthy, you don't hurt people. When you're hurting, you hurt people. Everywhere. Your well-being is determined by your willingness to forgive. If you're a victim here this morning, it's time to forgive. It's time to say, Lord, I give up the right to be a victim. I give up the right to my sin. I give up the right to be offended. Lord, it's a habit of my life. Some of you, it's a habit of your life. First thing you do is take offense. Change your habit. Repent. That's what repent means. Going one way, now I'm going the other. I choose not to be offended. I choose, Lord, to forgive. Oh, God, give me grace. Lord, can I forgive? Yes, you can. Some of you are saying, no, this happened so many years ago. The thing that's most offensive in my life was so long ago, it's become who I am. Yes, exactly. You are defined by your hurt. And it's time to say no longer. It's time to say it's no longer my hurt that will define me. It's God who will define me. Some of you, your personality has been changed by the hurt. I'll guarantee you, you begin to, f to forgive people in your past, and you will change. You won't be the same person you are today. You won't, in a year from now, if you practice forgiving and repenting every day, you practice that as a way of life, people will say, what happened to you? You used to be so... Well, hard to talk to. Used to be so touchy. Used to be so offended. What happened? You're this outgoing, happy, what in the world happened? I'll tell you what happened. God healed my heart. But you have to choose. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. You might say, they deserve it. I don't feel like forgiving them. I don't want to forgive them. Well, fine. Choose to forgive. Feelings never come first. They always come after. If you... One of the world's system... We are called out of this world to operate different than the world. One of the world's system is, do what you feel. Got offended? Go with that. Win some money from the government because you got offended. Win some money in court because you got offended. Here's what the Bible says. Don't take offense. Forgive. Choose. Don't go by how you feel. Say, oh God, I choose to forgive. I'm tired of being run by other people's actions. I'm tired of other people controlling me. Lord, I'm tired of other people controlling my emotions more than you. I'm tired of that person being my God. They rule, not you. Lord, I want to be free. I'm tired of being stuck. Time to get unstuck. So I want you to bow your heads. We're going to get unstuck this morning. And we're going to pray. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I'm going to ask everyone to pray this prayer out loud. Now, out loud, so everybody around you will hear you and you can hear them. When I, when I say you need to say the person's name, that you do not say out loud. Okay? You don't want to turn and say, it's my wife, Lord. You don't want to do that. Okay? It's my husband. Don't do that. When I say, say the person's name, you say that to the Lord. 
And when I tell you what the sin is, when I come to that place, I'll say, here's what I'm going to say. It is my choice today to forgive. And I'll pause. And when I say that, you say the person's name and be specific for the offense which here, and I'm going to just say he, you know, and you just go ahead and say he if it's a she. We'll use it as a generic he. Yeah, God knows which one. Brought against me. And after I say brought against me, then you need to fill in what they did. And you can't say everything they ever did to me. You need to be specific. You need to right now be saying, all right, Lord, what is the greatest offense in my heart? What is the thing that I'm holding? Who am I holding this against? And then you need to say one of those events. And then we'll go on to the rest. So you say it out loud until I pause for a name or the event. And that before we pray this, I want to pray something else too. So bow your heads and let's pray. So kids, it's an important time to just put your pens down and your books down and you just keep your heads bowed. You can pray these prayers too. This though, I want to pray for you. If you feel like you're a victim and if you feel like Offense is your M.O., the way you handle things, and the way you are so easily offended, then I want you to pray this prayer. This is just between you and the Lord. I will pray it. You can pray it to the Lord quietly. So this one's a quiet one. Do not speak out loud on this one. You feel like, you know, I take offense too easily. And here's what I want you to pray. Lord Jesus, I see in my life a habit of offense. I use it to control my world. I control people around me with it. I see that I have replaced you as the center of my life. I'm sorry. Forgive me. You are my Lord. You are my master. I will respond with grace to those who hurt. I will respond with forgiveness to those who mistreat me. I relinquish the right to be offended. I need your peace in my heart. Forgive me and heal my heart. In Jesus' name. All right, here's the prayer for everyone. So everybody repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, it is my choice today to forgive. And then say that person's name. For the offense which he brought against me. Now describe that offense. Remember what happened. Remember how you felt. I forgive him unconditionally for the things done which brought hurt into my life. I drop every charge which I brought against him and give up the right to ever charge him again for this offense. I cancel every judgment I have made. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release him from all responsibility for the hurt which his behavior provoked in me. Instead, I assume all responsibility for having chosen to be offended. Heavenly Father, I drop every charge that I've had against you for permitting this to happen to me. Please forgive me for any way that I have blamed you. Now Lord, I forgive myself for every wrong attitude every wrong action and every wrong reaction associated with this offense. Heavenly Father, as I have forgiven, 
and say that person's name, for the hurt I experienced, please forgive me of my hurt. Forgive me of my bitterness. Forgive me of my anger and my unforgiveness. Holy Spirit, come and heal my thoughts. Heal my emotions. Heal my memories. And the damage and defilement caused by my offense. I need your touch today, Lord. I want to be free. I don't want this person ruling my heart. I want you ruling my heart. Oh God, do a work in me today and set me free. If there are more things I need to pray, show me this week. I want you to heal me. I want to be everything you want. I want to be your happy, loving, obedient servant. Thank you for healing me today. Now let me finish this prayer. Father, you are a great and mighty God. Lord, you have done so much in my life in healing my heart. And yet, Lord, I forget. There are times when I'm stuck, too. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for healing us. And Lord, there are so many more people we need to pray about. Remind us this week to seek forgiveness, to seek cleansing from you. Lord, you had said in your word, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all ungodliness, unrighteousness. Oh God, thank you for healing us.